Hello everyone and welcome to our 15th Global Public Seminar in Comparative and International Education. These seminars are jointly organized by the Department of Education and St. Edmund Hall at the University of Oxford. My name is Maya chang -Siliani. I'm Associate Professor of Comparative and International Education at Oxford. Before introducing our speaker, let me attend to a few administrative points. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted online in due course. We will only record the first half of the webinar, which is the presentation itself, and we will stop recording when we move on to the Q&A. Please keep yourself muted throughout the webinar unless you have been asked to speak or to ask a question. If you want to ask a question or if you want to share your comments, your thoughts, please use the chat function and briefly write out the question you wish to ask. At the end of the presentation, if your question is selected, I will invite you to ask it yourself directly. When you are invited to ask your question or to share your thoughts, to share your comments, please unmute yourself, switch on your video and state your name and where you are from. We have one more seminar advertised till the end of this academic year. It will take place in July and we are putting together an exciting new program of seminars for autumn. In the next few moments, I will share a link in the chat to the web page where you can learn about the topic of the forthcoming seminar in July and book your place. You can also follow that page and um, learn about our new seminar series starting from autumn, which will be there probably in two weeks time. I will also share a link to the YouTube page where you can watch some of our past webinars. Now the best part, let me introduce our today's speaker. Our today's speaker is Jan Hermann Jan Matz, who is Professor of Political Socialization at UCL Institute of Education. Herm's career in academia commenced with a doctoral research project on post-Soviet Ukraine at the University of Amsterdam, and actually he's joining from Amsterdam today. He explored Ukraine's nation-building policies in education, as well as policy responses of Russian minorities living in Ukraine obviously policy responses to education policies. This is where Ham's interest in the role of government in shaping the identities and values of young people through education emerged. This topic has been a defining feature of his research since then. Herm is interested in how education broadly conceived can promote civic values such as tolerance, civic equality and political engagement. Much of his research is internationally comparative, focusing on institutional characteristics of education systems and how these are related to inequalities of civic values. His latest book is Education, Democracy and Inequality, Political Engagement and Citizenship Education in Europe, which was published in 2019 and it is co-authored with Bryony Hoskins. He's currently working on a Nuffield funded project about post 16 educational trajectories and social inequalities in political engagement. This afternoon, Pam will be speaking about why does educational tracking lead to greater inequality in political engagement? And he will be zooming in on France, but as he mentioned, there will be some comparisons drawn <laughs> to other places. Thank you so much for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, uh, Maya. I really appreciate uh, this uh, invitation for this uh, nice uh, public seminar series on comparative and international education at the University of Oxford, which you have uh, initiated. And uh, well, Maya and me, we know each other quite well from the Compare Education uh, Editorial Board, uh, where Maya is, is, uh, has been an, 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 ed an editor, a member of for, for years, and I've been an, uh, an editor of Com Compare for six years. And now, uh, actually, I, I, I handed it over to a colleague of mine last September. Um, and so, uh, um, just to start the the present presentation, as Maya already said, she gave a very good introduction to my to my work, to my research interests. I have indeed been interested in um, in political engagement for a long time, and particularly in in all kinds of facets in which uh, education can promote uh, political engagement. 
And the presentation that I'm going to uh, show you now, and let me see if I can bring that up. Um, um, let's see. Uh, so, uh, can you all see the presentation? Yes, it's excellent. Okay, yeah. excellent. So, um, this is indeed uh, core to my research interest, this topic, uh, uh, this, this, uh, the, the, the possibility that educational tracking could lead to greater inequality in political engagement. Um, and we were zooming in then on France, interestingly. Um, and so, because um, I'll be making use of a particular data set that was collected amongst uh, young people in France, uh, 18 year olds, 17, 18 year olds, um, in the different uh, uh, tracks in, um, in upper secondary education. Uh, and this is also quite special that I'm zooming in on France because um, I'm not sure if some of you know, but France has been very reluctant in joining all kinds of surveys, international surveys, because then these international surveys tend to ask about ethnic backgrounds or religious backgrounds, which is a, an absolutely no-go area for, for, for France. So uh, they haven't participated in any of these international surveys, well, aside from PISA, but nothing to do with civic attitudes or values. And so this is the first time, actually, that France has now uh, conducted such a, such a research. But this was just a, a, a survey in France. Now, actually, France has joined the ICCS uh, study survey of 2022, which is currently being held. Um, and that's really, so that's really an, um, um, something new for France. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let uh, me start. Um, so tracking, what do we mean by tracking? Well, uh, that's basically the allocation of, of young people in upper secondary, sometimes also actually in lower secondary already, to kind of an academic track or a variety of vocational tracks usually on the basis of prior achievement and the ones who then performed best they are allocated to the academic track usually the, the the more prestigious one and also the one that leads to preparation for uh university education although some vocational tracks also can lead to uh, uh, um, uh, a diploma qualification that gives access to um, university education um, so um, tracking is usually considered to be necessary to prepare young people for specific positions in the labor market, um, which require specific skill sets. And therefore the education system needs to branch out, needs to specialize. specialize. That's kind of the, that's, that's more the kind of labor market perspective on tracking. But we also know that um, tracking could lead to inequalities in political engagement. Um, usually it's the case that those young people who are allocated to the vocational track, they usually are already less engaged than the ones allocated to the academic track. And then uh, some studies have shown, the ones that, that you see here, that being in, the edu in, in this track further makes these young people diverge. So the ones who are in the academic track become ever more engaged, while, while the ones who are in the vocational track, they're becoming, well, the, the, their engagement doesn't grow as, as steeply as, that, as those in the academic track, or even, even declines. And just to give you some ideas of, of, uh, of some research on this, this is actually comparative research. Uh, this is by a colleague of mine in the Netherlands, a well-known, uh, quantitative uh, sociologist, Herman van der Werfhorst. So he found that basically the, the, the gap in political engagement between the ones who are trained in an academic track and the ones trained in a vocational track is largest in the countries with the most pervasive tracking systems. Uh, and those are you, those are the countries like Germany, the Netherlands, um, but uh, Belgium, but also some former communist countries, actually Hungary, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia, as you can see here. Uh, the most pervasive, meaning also the ones who 
start a tracked system earliest. So in, what, what is characterizing these countries is that they already start tracking after primary school. So on the basis of results in primary school, pupils already get allocated to different tracks. Uh, and so the gaps in, in, in engagement are largest in such state. Uh, well, to then come back to the first slide. So, um, so we know that these, this tracking produces these inequalities. And in the, the literature has also suggested various ways and or mechanisms through which tracking enhances these inequalities. But then, so yeah, the mechanisms as it were. But then the, the question is how can we, I mean, so far no studies have really looked at these mechanisms and tested these mechanisms. Um, and that is what this study that I'm now going to present about is doing. So it's, it's um, I'm, I'm, I really aim here to test the, uh, these different mechanisms. Um, I should also say that this, uh, this, the data set that I'm drawing on was collected by a French um, um, uh, institution called uh, CNESCO, uh, which stands for, which was on the first slide, I think it's called Centre National de, de l'étude um, de, de système scolaire. I'm not just giving it in French. Uh, and it was, it, it was uh, headed for uh, quite a long time by a very good colleague of mine, Nathalie Mons. Um, and it's actually through her that I managed to get access to the very nice uh, survey data that was collected by this, uh, by this uh, institution. Um, so uh, what then are these, these ways in which tracking or these mechanisms through which tracking is said to enha enhance these inequalities in political engagement? Uh, well, uh, through the, the curriculum and, and ped pedagogy, um, it has been highlighted in, this, in the literature that um, the curriculum and the ped pedagogy is much more stimulating for the ones in, in, in the academic track. Um, they receive uh, um, um, uh, a curriculum that is fostering, uh, that's enhancing the knowledge and insight into uh, the political system and in enhancing uh, skills to participate effectively in it. Um, so as a rule, students in such tracks learn how to debate issues, how to put a certain issue on the agenda, how to defend a certain position. Uh, they learn critical thinking skills, uh, distinguishing facts from fiction and so on. Whereas in the um, uh, vocational track, the argument goes that their uh, students are merely taught uh, good manners, so learning how to fit in with society and not actually question, not to challenge or not to debate issues. Um, it's also been argued that um, um, teachers in the vocational track are actually quite reluctant to um, allow students to debate all kinds of social and political issues openly because they fear that this might lead to a breakdown of classroom order. It's simply that uh, students in the vocational track can't handle, uh, as it were, the um, um, debating freedom. And it's been also been argued that students in the vocational track are actually uh, less uh, called on to also um, give their opinions about how teaching and learning should be done. So possibilities of student voice are said to be a lot lower in the vocational track. And so these, these of course, are so, uh, learning how to debate, um, in, enjoying um, free discussions of, of social and political issues and student voice are said to be very stimulating in turn for, for, for becoming more politically engaged. Um, people have also noted that it might be, it might have to do with the social composition of the track. Um, when you start allocating students on, uh, to different tracks on the basis of prior achievement, you as a rule also 
start allocating them on the basis of their social background, because we know that um, social background is such a strong determinant of achievement. So you end up then allocating students on the basis of their social background, leading to a lot of social segregation uh, between tracks. So what you, as a rule, you get an overrepresentation of students from um, from middle class and uh, upper class backgrounds in the academic track, and an overrepresentation overrepresentation of students of more uh, disadvantaged backgrounds in the vocational track. Um, and this is this is said to lead to certain um, peer group cultures, and particularly in the track this is said to lead to a kind of a, cu a counterculture that is uh, marked by things like well a contempt for the educational process also perhaps because students have had negative experiences with with uh, with schools prior to being allocated to the vocational track um, so a, a a culture of disengagement is fostered um, uh, and the, a kind of nice book that illustrates this is the book by Paul Willis, um, Learning to Labour, which talks about how working class youth is, in a way, sabotaging the educational process. Well, this kind of counterculture is set to emerge in the vocational track that is then of, uh, making students even more disengaged. Um, and lastly, it has been argued that um, tracking might lead to less engagement, uh, uh, particularly for those allocated to the vocational track, because the, it, the, the, the fact of being allocated to such a track, uh, uh, in other words, that you were not good enough to, um, to join the academic track, might lead to feelings of, 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 um, of failure, um, and a lack of self-efficacy uh, amongst the students allocated to the vocational track, and this might this might uh, translate into kind of more disengagement with with society uh, in a broader sense. Mm. But there's also a counter argument that has been that has been fielded in the literature, and that's that the the effect of tracking uh, represents only a selection effect, so the, that there is not really a separate effect of tracking. Um, and for instance, uh, Persson, you could see him um, uh, mentioned here, he argued that um, uh, young people who are allocated to the academic track, they're already very engaged um, and already achieving very well. And, and so uh, basically the difference between tracks that you see in engagement simply just reflects this prior engagement uh, and therefore it just represents a selection effect there is not an effect of tracking itself um, so these are the views on how tracking can uh, affect political engagement uh, or not uh, and so let's then zoom in on france what's particular about france well um, um, uh, in terms of uh, the degrees that people prepare for, it has to be said that um, all tracks, also vocational tracks, offer a possibility to get a, a baccalaureate, which then gives access to higher education. Um, academic tracks are, are found in the so-called Lycée d'enseignement général et technologique. Uh, I hope my pronunciation is reasonable, and I'm not sure if there are any Frenchmen or uh, uh, ladies from France here. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the vocational track is offered in a uh, school type called the Lycée Professionnel. And you also have a, a school type that offers both tracks, and that's called the uh, Lycée Polyvalent. Then it's important to point out that there are actually also vocational tracks that are not leading to a buck. So those are considered to be uh, the less prestigious ones. And they are, uh, the, uh, they're, they're known as the Certificat d'Aptitude Professionnelle. Um, and they're offer, also offered in, 
the lycée type of a, uh, a lycée professionnel. Um, there is indeed also selection into the academic track, but not on the basis of some test, but on the basis of judgment of the class council. And they again, the class council reviews then the, you know, the, the, the achievement of students in terms of their, on their school-based tests. Uh, and interestingly, the class council is composed of teachers, but also class representatives. So you've got students, interestingly, uh, evaluating, I guess so, uh, the performance of their fellow students in class, uh, interestingly. Um, all tracks in France have citizenship education. And that's in France, that's uh, enseignement moral et civique. And they also have history and geography. So they have quite a broad curriculum. And, um, and this was even more made uniform across tracks with the 2015 reform, which was under the then president Hollande, uh, a socialist, um, which led to a further equalization of the content of EMC across tracks. And it also instituted uh, an EMC exam in vocational tracks. And I think because of this rather kind of uniformity in, 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 in the curriculum and maybe also in pedagogy, uh, I would not expect that if I see an effect of tracking in France that this runs through the curriculum, precisely because the curriculum is actually quite uniform. And this is very different in England. In England, where it is a highly specialized academic track, as a rule, uh, students just take three subjects in their A-levels. And also the vocational tracks are extremely specialized. So they only include uh, practical courses, preparing for very specific, preparing very specifically for jobs, uh, certain kind of jobs, so that you would not find any type of general courses, such as citizenship education or history geography uh, in the, the vocational tracks. Um, also, like in France, in England, you do have different school types, but there is not a one-to-one -one link with tracks. So it is, um, uh, you have sixth form colleges, which are geared at delivering A-levels, but actually they can also provide sometimes some vocational uh, courses. You also have further education colleges, and those are kind of more broad-based colleges, which provide everything. So the, 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 the focus is on vocational courses, but they, as a rule, also offer A-levels. Um, and it is actually possible for students in those, those further education colleges to combine um, uh, tracks. Um, in England, you also typically have a very large status difference between tracks. So the academic track is considered to be much more prestigious than the vocational one. And that could also explain why, in terms of enrollment in England, you see about 66% of students going to the A levels and only a third to vocational track. Um, in the United States, uh, there is less of a rigorous separation between academic and vocational tracks um, because they're all offered in one school, in high school, and also because the uh, curriculum. Um, is fairly broad with low of uh, electives. Um, so you need to, as a rule, you take uh, exams in, in eight subjects and you can really combine as you please. So you could have, you know, um, art, history, uh, biology and mechanical engineering or whatever. You can com combine it in loads of different ways. Um, so there's not such a rigorous separation there. In Germany, Interestingly, um, Germany is, of course, known for its very prestigious uh, vocational education because of the, um, this apprenticeship system that is part and parcel of vocational education in Germany. Um, and um, vocational education there has quite a bit of prestige because um, in Germany still there is a, an appreciation for things like craftsmanship and becoming a master in a certain trade that's highly valued. 
And so there, the state, there is not such a big status difference between the academic and vocational track. You even have people who first do art history, they come to the conclusion that they can't get a job with that, and then they go back to the Berufsschule to do a vocational education to learn a certain uh, trade. Um, that, that's quite common in Germany. Um, uh, but what you do have is a very strict separation between academic and vocational tracks in different institutions. So the gymnasium offers a academic track and the Berufsschule, that stands for uh, vocational school or, or, or professional school, or occupational school, that, that, is, that is offering um, vocational education. Um, in terms of, it is not as specialized, interestingly, as in the English case, because um, the vocational track does offer uh, civics um, and also some other general subjects. So just by way of seeing how the French system compares to the other systems that you have in, uh, in uh, upper, in, uh, in Europe. Um, the data source, as I said, uh, is the um, is the French data source. Um, Enquête École et Citoyenneté, uh, which was conducted by CNESCO in 2018. Um, it includes almost, um, so more than 6,000 students in the last grade of upper uh, secondary, and which is called Terminal in, in France, from two, 233 schools. Um, and I've been able to, I mean, it, it includes students uh, in um, these, uh, these three different types of lycées. Um, but unfortunately, it did not include any um, uh, students that go for the uh, Certificat d'Aptitude Professionnelle, so which does not lead to a BAC uh, qualification. Um, in terms of the variables, that I used, well, the dependent variable, so to capture political engagement, that's intention to vote in local, national, and European elections. So that's some kind of index that I created. Um, in terms of the, uh, uh, the explanatory variables, um, including the ones that are tapping the uh, mechan proposed mechanisms. Well, first of all, track. Uh, I, I measured that simply with the school type attended. Um, and here, of course, then the, the issue is that uh, um, I, I measured, it, measured it a bit indirectly because the LPO, if you still remember my earlier introduction, the LPO, the Lycée Polyvalent, it combines to, it offers both tracks. So I do not know the ones who, who, went, to, who, who went to an LPO, which track they precisely did. Uh, um, because I only know uh, that they went to this type of lycée. But I do know that the ones who went to a LEGT, they definitely did an academic track. And the ones who went to an LP, uh, lycée professionnel, they definitely did a vocational track. Um, the curriculum I measured was simply with the number of different topics addressed in uh, enseignement moral et civique. Um, pedagogy, I measured with three variables with uh, student perceptions of how open the, cli the climate of discussion is in the classroom, student perceptions of the degree to which they can influence learning and teaching, and whether they participated in the civic project or not. Social composition, I measured with simply the, the average of the social backgrounds of the uh, uh, respondents. Um, so the school average and political efficacy, I measured with a, a, a several sets of uh, a set of items, tapping things like um, I feel confident in talking about politics. I I am interested in politics. I um, um, when 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 we discuss politics, I usually have something to say. The, these kinds of these kinds of so tapping basically self confidence in dealing with politics. And then I also included loads of control variables in the analysis, uh, social background, obviously, but also parental interest in politics, parental discussions, for parent, uh, political discussions with uh, parents. And I did that because um, 
the data source that I used was cross-sectional. It wasn't longitudinal, which means that I was not able to take the incoming uh, prior political engagement into account uh, when students entered these different tracks. And this is really a drawback for assessing the net effect of tracking on political engagement. Uh, so in a way, I was not able to address so well this issue of selection effects. Yet, with these control variables, I can at least partly address those selection effects because I can control for social background. I can control for parental interest in politics, well, as reported by the students, parental, uh, sorry, political discussions with parents as reported by the students. So which at least go some way to uh, addressing these, uh, these selection effects, along then with all the other uh, variables that you see here. Um, the analytic strategy was that I did a, a multi-level analysis because I had uh, variables, independent variables, both at the school level, but also at the individual level. And then you need to do multi-level analysis. And then how to get at these, these mechanisms? Well, I did a stepwise approach. Um, this is a, actually quite a traditional approach, but I think it's still quite underestimated in terms of its potential. Um, because it really allows you to see uh, the, the moderating uh, or mediating factors. So um, uh, in, a, in a way that you can, you can um, track what happens to the effect of tracking if you include then these variables representing these mechanisms one by one in the model. If the effect of tracking disappears uh, once you've entered a variable representing these mechanisms, such a mechanism, then that then you've got quite a well strong indication that uh, track exerts its effect through this particular mechanism. Uh, so that's the kind of the approach that I adopted here. Um, let's then first have some uh, descriptive statistics here. Here you see that. Uh, in terms of voting intentions, um, that's the dependent variable. Um, indeed, I see that uh, the, the, the level of voting intentions is, is highest amongst those in the academic track uh, and lowest in the ones in the vocational track, which is as expected, and the ones in the, in the mixed uh, institution providing both tracks, they indeed uh, show a, uh, are in the, in the middling position. But then if we look at the curriculum, there you see something interesting, right? You would perhaps expect that there's more a more diversity of topics being addressed in the academic track, along with, uh, well, what the literature has suggested. But that's actually not the case. We find that the greatest diversity of topics is uh, apparently in the, in, the, in, the, in the institution offering both tracks. And then shortly followed by those in the, in the book, uh, those going to school in a, in a lycée professionnel. Uh, and so um, in that respect, uh, this is somewhat uh, what we would not have expected. And perhaps this is then the influence of this reform that has taken place in 2015. Now we can also see that in terms of pedagogy, the, the differences between the tracks are not that uh, pronounced. Um, uh, with even in concerning student influence, the students in the vocational track actually saying uh, or perceiving that they have a slightly well, stronger influence on learning and teaching than the ones in the academic track, interestingly. Um, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see the cursor, but in, in terms of this value, 2.14 versus 2.04. The, the the ones in the academic track do report the the the, the well do, do think that the, uh, the their perceptions of an open climate of classroom discussion are higher than the ones in the in the mixed and the and, and the vocational um, institutions, but the difference is not very large. So here we can see in terms of the curriculum and pedagogy, perhaps we can clearly see these uh, the the effect of this reform uh, working. Then if we look at social composition there, we do see a major difference between the tracks. Uh, 
with uh, indeed in the academic track we see that that is uh, uh, that's where you find overrepresentation of children from middle and upper class backgrounds, and the ones in the vocational track, they're, they're scoring lowest on 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 uh, social composition. So it means that they have relatively many students of disadvantaged backgrounds there. And in terms of political efficacy, we also see quite a strong difference across the tracks, with the ones in the vocational track reporting uh, 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 considering themselves to be least knowledgeable and least confidence in, uh, in terms of talking about uh, politics. And then, so let's then see what happens to the effect of track when we introduce these mechanisms one by one. Well, how do you read this? Uh, well, the, the those in the academic track, those are uh, the one, that's the reference category. So when you see here in model one, which only has track in uh, the model. Um, this negative correlation means that the ones in the vocational track have a uh, significantly lower uh, level of political engagement in terms of intentions to vote. And also the ones uh, in um, who are going to the LPO, so that, that offer both tracks. Then what happens if we introduce the controls? Then we see that the, the difference between academic and uh, a track, so the ones in the LEGT and the ones in the LPO disappears, uh, but there's still a significant difference between the ones in the academic track and the ones in the vocational tracks. So which suggests that track does have an impact by itself, and it's not just due to selection into these different tracks. Um, then what happens if we then add these uh, variables for the mechanisms, mechanisms one by one? Well, we indeed see that um, nothing much happens to the effect of, of tracking. Uh, so it stays, it, it stays significant when we introduce uh, uh, the variable for the curriculum and the variables for pedagogy in the model. Um, and I should say here, I'm not showing you all the results here because it will become cluttered up the table. But what I can say is that these variables are having an impact on political engagement. They do show significant effects, uh, but it's just that they cannot explain the effect of track as predicted actually, as I kind of expected given the uniform system in France. Um, but then what happens if we add the, uh, mech the variable for of social composition uh, then we do see that the effect of track disappears, it becomes insignificant. Uh, and so, which then strongly suggests that it is through the social composition that tracking has uh, exerts an effect. So it is perhaps indeed this creation of these different kind of cultures, peer group cultures, that uh, exerts then an, an effect on, on political engagement. Um, Political efficacy actually does, uh, it, it also has an effect on political engagement, but it cannot explain the effect of tracking. Um, so in, in other words, it is really through, it seems through the, the social composition that, um, that tracking exerts its effect. Um, and um, uh, so in other words, it is these particular peer group cultures perhaps more stimulating in, in the academic track and uh, leading to further disengagement in the vocational track that uh, tracking influences uh, political engagement. Um, and um, this, if, if you stop to think about this for a minute, it, you, you could perhaps then surmise that um, I mean, in France, the system is still re reasonably uniform, right? Because in terms of curriculum and pedagogy, there do not seem to be many differences between the tracks. Uh, yet, these curriculum and pedagogy variables did have an, an effect on political engagement. So this then leads to perhaps the, well, the conjecture that in contexts where you have less uniform approaches to, to certain citizenship education, like for instance in England, you might even find perhaps much bigger differences between uh, tracks in um, political engagement. And we do indeed find 
I mean, the research that I'm doing together with my colleague, Ryan Hoskins, we do time and again find major differences between tracks in England in political engagement. Um, the implications for education then are uh, of these findings, well, um, ideally, I guess, um, undo selection into tracks on the basis of ability. Uh, because, of course, uh, the selection on the basis of ability, you also then uh, unintentionally start selecting on the basis of social background. So you get this social segregation. Uh, but I guess that may be quite a tall order to achieve because of the because of this kind of conviction that you need uh, uh, different tracks serving particular positions in the labor market, also tracks differing in level. Um, and, and, and therefore, it, it, it might be very hard to kind of achieve this. What might be much more feasible to achieve is to offer uh, not only an equal amount of citizenship education in the two uh, tracks, but actually more citizenship education and more participatory approaches in the vocational track. Um, in a way, in a way of well. Um, compensating perhaps you could argue or uh, for perhaps missed political engagement in in in, in previous years or um, um, or uh, yeah some kind of affirmative action uh, policy almost um, and this uh, I'm also arguing this because uh, research has also found that um, the pupils who have uh, who are from more disadvantaged backgrounds have more to gain are gaining more from uh, the same amount of citizenship education in terms of making them becoming more engaged than students in the academic uh, uh, track um, uh, and and students of more middle class backgrounds so the same so so uh, citizenship education might have stronger effects for those in uh, of disadvantaged backgrounds and also those in vocational education. Um, so this is all I wanted to share with you. Thank you for your attention. It was a little bit more than half an hour. I'm so sorry, Maya. Um, That's okay. It's, uh, it's, I, I'm really looking forward to your questions. Thank you so much. That was excellent.